Welcome. It's good to have you all here today. Um, joyous, celebratory day. <coughs> um, let's see. Uh, we don't have a lot of announcements, but I don't know if you've noticed this when you came in. Our uh, Sunday school is taking up a collection for Central Mass Shelter. Uh, we're looking for socks, new socks, gloves, hats, underwear. So um, if you can help us out, there's a deadline of the 6th of November to get these in. Um, so if you can help us out with that, it, um, it would be greatly appreciated. So this is cool. Um, so we have baptism of uh, cousins today, and it's, it's, to me it's very, very exciting. I enjoy baptisms. Um, I enjoy them for multiple reasons. The idea that, that we, as a, a family of faith, welcome somebody into the faith, and we commit ourselves to, um, to helping a child grow in the faith is is a wonderful thing um, because it goes beyond knowing just right from wrong our, our faith is a journey um, that starts at an age and really doesn't end till we breathe our last so I am I'm just very thrilled that you're all here today um, does that okay do you want me to say it you go ahead and say it. Yeah. Um, for those of you that don't know, the upper room is a small booklet that covers uh, two-month periods. It's uh, a daily reflection by regular people, and it's kind of good that you hear something other than coming from the pastor, but regular, everyday folks, um, which I actually really am, too, but regular, everyday folks, you hear their story and, and what the faith means to them. So uh, please feel free and uh, it's also a good habit once a day to, you know, spend some time with, with God. At least once a day, in my opinion. All right, I'll be quiet. Um, does anybody have any announcements to share? Okay. I'm lighting our celebration candle uh, in, in the hopes uh, of healing and... Um, uh, uh, for the folks in Florida, for all that they're experiencing and, and living through, um, things that we just can't really fathom unless we've been unless we've been there ourselves. Um, so uh, I I pray for those people and um, for those that not only have lost their homes but for the people that have lost their lives. I also pray for peace in the Ukraine and Russia. Just so you know, if anybody makes a lot of noise, that's okay. Stay in your seat. Don't take them out. Um, the children are welcome here, and that's just part of going to church. So if, if somebody makes noise, don't worry about it. It's a community. The Lord be with you. Let us greet each other with the passion and the peace of Christ.
Let us read responsively this morning's call to worship. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing your praise to the glory of God's name. Present your best selves for God's approval. Work and witness without shame or pretense. Please be seated. So, as you may have noticed, that's not the song that was in your bulletins. I have a tendency to make mistakes at least once a week. And evidently I put the wrong hymn in. So I apologize. And I will check with Hans before I go on to the other ones and make sure we have the right hymn number. So again, my apologies, but it's a weekly occurrence for me. Let us join together in our prayer of invocation. Awesome God, who has given us life and kept our feet from slipping, we thank you now for bringing us to this place of worship and learning. Inspire us to speak truthfully and listen attentively Keep us from wrangling over words in ways that divide. May we prove to be faithful workers devoted to healing and reconciliation in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And that's okay. I would like to have Ava and Allison bring forward their parents and godparents. Um, please bring your insert uh, as well because you'll be answering some questions.
Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace and baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love and support of these children who are about to be baptized as they live and grow in Christ? Let us come together in spirit of prayer. We thank you, God, for the gift of creating the health workplace. 
That was fun. Our Old Testament reading is from Psalms number 66. Praise God with shouts of joy, all people. Sing to the glory of his name. Offer him glorious praise. Say to God, how wonderful are the things you do. Your power is so great that your enemies bow down in fear before you. Everyone on earth worships you. They sing praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done, his wonderful acts among people. He changed the sea into dry land. Our ancestors crossed the river on foot. There we rejoice because of what he did. He rules forever by his might and keeps his eyes on the nations. Let no rebels rise against him. Praise our God, all nations. Let your praise be heard. He has kept us alive and has not allowed us to fall. You have put us to the test, God. As silver is purified by fire, so you have tested us. You let us fall into a trap and placed heavy burdens on our back. You let our enemies trample us. We went through fire and flood. But now you have brought us to a place of safety. This ends our first reading. For those of you that uh, don't know, this is a time where um, in, in the pews in front of you, we have what we call prayer cards. If you have uh, anybody that you would like us to hold up in prayer today, please feel free to fill one out uh, and we will lift them in prayer today.
we do have some prayers to share with you. Um, prayers from Ron, prayers for Kathy. Uh, prayer of gratitude that Louise is doing well and out and about. Um, also, a uh, prayer of thanksgiving for uh, my sister who lives in Florida. Um, she lives on the Gulf Coast. Her house got slightly hit, a little bit of, um, you know, roof tiles and stuff. And other than that, uh, lost power for a week, but she's back in her house and doing well. So that is something I am grateful for. Um, also, she was in the hospital during that time. She has something going on where swallowing is difficult for her, but she can now eat cream of wheat with mushed bananas. So I am grateful that my sister is uh, on the mend. So let us come together in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your many blessings and especially for our beloved church. You've created us all, unique and diverse, yet bound together in love and community. Grant that we might continue to be your body, word made flesh again for the sake of your precious world. Receive the prayers we have offered this day. Help us to leap barriers of division and strife, of injustice and exclusion. May we never miss your presence in stranger, self, or friend. Open our eyes to new ministries into which you are leading us. Help us to reach out in your name, spreading justice, unity, compassion, and peace throughout the world. Make us bread and light and salt for one another. We ask this through the power of your Holy Spirit. Loving God, we ask that you hear now these the silent prayers of our hearts and minds. Loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to welcome two little girls into the fold. May you bless Ava and Allison and their families and all those that have come here to celebrate that time of their baptism. Be with us all, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let us join together in our church's mission statement. Our church exists to cultivate the love of God and our community and to build a deep conviction that we are all beloved, valued people of worth who are devoted to following Jesus and doing God's work. We welcome and seek Christ's living presence in our town and beyond. Our church is a place of worship, inspiration, learning, and discovery. We serve our community and are the arms, hands, and voice of God's love. This morning's offerings will now be received.
Let us join together in our offertory prayer of thanksgiving. We bring the first fruits of our labors, the best of all we have, a portion of the bounty you entrust to us. Accept our gifts, gracious God, as a symbol of our renewed commitment. We give thanks for the wholeness you offer us amid a fragmented world. We are grateful for meaningful tasks in the midst of chaos and meaningless suffering. We dedicate ourselves and our offering to you, your faithful service. Amen. be seated. Today's gospel lesson tells the story of Jesus healing the ten lepers. At this time, Jesus is traveling with his disciples from the northern province of Galilee to the city of Jerusalem. This would be his last journey to the city, and along the way, Jesus responds to a variety of situations, finding opportunities for teaching and healing. Our reading from this morning is from the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. As Jesus made his way to Jerusalem, he went along the border between Samaria and Galilee. He was going into a village when he was met by ten men suffering from a dreaded skin disease. They stood at a distance and shouted, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Jesus saw them and said to them, Go and let the priests examine you. On the way, they were made clean. When one of them saw that he was healed, he came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself to the ground at Jesus' feet and thanked him. The man was a Samaritan. Jesus spoke up. There were ten who were healed. Where are the other nine? Why is this foreigner the only one who came back to give thanks to God? And Jesus said to him, Get up and go. Your faith has made you well. 
That ends our reading from the Gospel of Luke. So the Gospel, uh, it, its opening line was, Jesus was passing along the borders of Samaria and Galilee. And this border location explains why the lepers included both Samaritans and Jews. Um, under normal circumstances, Jews would have nothing to do with Samaritans, uh, but these Jewish and Samaritan lepers are drawn together by their common misery. Normally, Jews loathe Samaritans, whom they considered to be religiously compromised half-breeds. That loving your neighbor thing doesn't sound all that promising right there, does it? I like when Jesus uses the supposed bad guy to be the hero of the story. So here amongst Jews, we have a Samaritan leading the way. Who of us doesn't occasionally root for the underdog? As Jesus entered into a certain village, ten men who were lepers met him, who stood at a distance. They lifted their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, it's important to know that leprosy is not, um, was not, lepers of the time may have had Hansen's disease, or they could have had other diseases as well, such as ringworm, psoriasis, and leucoderma, and vitiglio. Some of these uh, some of these uh, diseases are highly contagious, and others were not. However, in those days, a diagnosis of leprosy, no matter what it was, it was considered a death sentence. Pretty much the same way that a diagnosis of cancer or AIDS was a death sentence only a couple decades ago. The fate of the infected person was made even worse by the requirement that he or she be isolated from all healthy people. The infected person, adding more shame to their lives, was required to shout, unclean, unclean, when approached by a healthy person. That had to be painful. Also, people tended to regard leprosy as a sign of God's judgment. That made, them, that made people around them less compassionate than they might be otherwise, because they believed that it was God who delivered this death sentence upon these people. It seems that lepers have heard of Jesus because they cry out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. If they were addressing an ordinary traveler, they would say, hey, mister, can we have some money? But they were approaching Jesus. They knew his name. They, they must have heard of the good works he was able to do. And they asked for mercy. We hear further in scripture that Jesus saw them. And that could be taken as something kind of trivial. Oh, I saw the leaves out there, I saw the big chimney, I saw this. But I see these lepers that don't have a life, that are outcasts. I see them. I see them not with my eyes, but with my heart. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to see people deeper than just with our eyes. Jewish law and human nature conspired to make the leper invisible. People, even today, are inclined to ignore sick and dying people because suffering and death make us uncomfortable. We can be grateful in the knowledge that the one who saw the lepers also sees us. Go and show yourselves to the priests, is what Jesus said. 
And that's important. In this group of 10 men, there are Gentiles as well as Jews. So when he tells them to present themselves to the priest, I think we're witnessing what a lot of religions called ecumenism, ecumenical. That means people of different faith traditions coming together for a common reason. Jesus doesn't say go see a Jewish priest. He doesn't say go see a Samaritan priest. He says go present yourselves to the priest. The reason is, is that it is the priest who will allow them to go back and become a member of society. It is the priest who by their blessing, you might say, a person is able to go back and hug their significant other, their spouse, their wife, their children. So Jesus tells these people, go and present yourself, and they go. But one person, one Samaritan, realizes that, wow, something happened here. I'm good. Now, not only did Jesus send them to the priest so they can be welcomed back into regular everyday life, he also, well, I would think, he's also doing that because he wants the Jewish, or he wants the priest to realize that it was through Christ, through Jesus, that they were healed. Um, which would only make him more uh, at the risk, you might say. These lepers are now restored to the point that they can re-enter society. But one of them stops goes back to Jesus, glorifying God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you, I have my life back. Jesus wanted to know why only one came back. And you'd think that that's a good question, right? Why did only one of them come back? Well, think about it. If you were witness to an accident and the person you loved that was in that accident is fine, you'd go up and hug that person. You don't necessarily go running to the fireman that got him out. So it's kind of natural. It's not that they were ungrateful, but their priorities were geared towards their, their loved ones. Jesus told the leper, get up and go your way. Your faith has healed you. The New Testament was written originally in Greek and the word that, it, that is translated healed is the word sozo. The word sozo has several, several different meanings. It can mean healed, it can also mean saved. When I read this story, I like to think that Jesus was telling this man that his faith had not only healed him, but saved him. So what's this connection between 10 lepers and you, me? What's the connection? Actually, it's pretty easy to answer. The connection is about being thankful. It's about gratitude. We need to remember to thank God for his gifts, great and small. It's not easy, but it's important. Vance Harvner says, the whole Christian life is one big thank you. The living expression of our gratitude to God for God's goodness but we take the divine for granted, and what we take for granted, we never take seriously. The late Henry Nouwen, a Catholic priest, went on a mission to Peru and Bolivia. He worked among some of the poorest people on the face of the planet. 
he wrote a book about his experiences there and entitled it Gracias. The word that I keep hearing, he said, the word that I kept hearing wherever he went was gracias. It sounded like the refrain from a long ballad of events. Gracias a usted, gracias a Dios, muchos gracias. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Many thanks. He says, I saw thousands of poor and hungry children. I met many young men and women without money, a job, or a decent place to live. I spent long hours with sick elderly people and I witnessed more misery and pain than ever before in my life. But in the midst of it all, that word lifted me again and again to a new realm of seeing and hearing. Gracias, thank you. Now and noted that those people didn't take anything for granted, nothing. They didn't, take, they didn't know whether they would have food to eat tomorrow, or work, or peace. But, and this is important, but they received every good thing that came their way as a gift. Did they get a job? Gracias. Did they get something to eat? Gracias. Did someone smile and say hello? Gracias. Now one says, what I claim is a right, what I claim as a right, my friends in Bolivia and Peru received as a gift. He talked about learning the art of gratitude from these poorest of the poor. He went on to say, I learned that everything that is, is freely given by the God of love. All is grace, light and water, shelter and food, work and free time, children, parents and grandparents, birth and death. It is all given to us. Why? So that we can learn to say, gracias, thanks. Thanks to God. Thanks to one another. Thanks to all and everyone. It seems the richer we get, the more difficult it is to remember to be thankful. We need to make a personal, special effort to say thanks to God and to our husband or wife or significant other and to our children and to the people we work with and to the people we worship with and to anyone who blesses us with even one ounce of grace. Amen.
our service of worship comes to an end, our service to one another now begins. I bid you peace and love, and may you go in God's grace. Also, there's food downstairs before I forget. <laughs> Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.